While the jury is still out on who the best faction in Fallout 4 is, it seems that one thing that nearly everybody agrees on is the fact that there is a lot of room for improvement among each of the four major factions we are able to join. That's why we thought it would be good fun to sit down and analyze each of the major factions and see if we could come up with five ways to flesh them out a little better and bring them a little closer to their mission and vision statements along the way, making them a little more interesting and inspiring for you, the player. While it's a simple thing to say you should have done this, it's not so easy to deal with the deadlines of large projects like releasing a video game to market. So we're going to try and be fair to Grandpa Todd by limiting ourselves to improvements that could be implemented using the systems that are already in-game. So stock up on pencils and tin cans because I'm Grey, you're watching Grey Gaming, and today it's time to build us a better Fallout by listing five things Bethesda probably could have done to improve the Minutemen in Fallout 4. We all know the memes by now. Another settlement needs our help. Here, I'll mark it on your map. Wah, wah. The simple fact of the matter is, is that helping people building cooperative safety and trade networks and clearing wretched hives of scum and villainy is sort of the Minutemen's milieu. The normal progression of the Minutemen's storyline is that as long as you weren't a naughty boy or girl and didn't go executing a little Commonwealth justice before heading to Concord, you're first sent to help Ten Pines Bluff and they ask you to clear out the raiders at the Corvega assembly plant. This is followed by going to Grey Garden and clearing out the super mutants and mire lurks infesting the Weston Water Treatment Plant, and this is followed by clearing a random location of critters so it can be populated. From here, your network building is completely and utterly random. The problem is, is that this makes no strategic sense whatsoever. There are so many areas between these locations that makes communication and transportation from site to site very dangerous, and sure, they may be quote-unquote with the Minutemen, but without the ability to communicate or come to each other's aid, they would be pretty much useless in the real world. So how do we fix this? Well, if a logical strategist was in charge of things, he would suggest helping Abernathy Farm first. Its extreme close proximity to Sanctuary Hills would allow it to serve as an outpost to extend the Minutemen's visibility beyond Sanctuary. Next, it might make sense to help Tent Pines Bluff, but then a great way to show that there is a reason you're the general and Preston Garvey is still a corporal is for Preston to suggest you go to Grey Garden, but you overrule him. Nate could point out that the crossroads at Starlight Drive-In is vital to proper communication and should be taken before expanding further, while Nora could mention that she noticed something fishy at Starlight on her way to Satellite Station Olivia, part of the Abernathy Farm questline. She could express concern about Ten Pines being able to communicate along that route, allowing Preston to learn a valuable lesson about military strategy and logistics and creating the idea in the player's mind that Preston won't be a corporal forever and that he's slowly working toward once again being trusted with command. From here you could once again return to a more radiant style of quest giving if that's absolutely absolutely necessary, but splitting the locations into quadrants of the Commonwealth so it's not completely obvious that it's randomized would be a huge win for players. So here's the deal. There are three Minutemen. Seriously, that's it. Three that matter enough to get a name. The Soul Survivor, Preston Garvey, and Ronnie Shaw. Ronnie is a wealth of experience, but she seems to have no ambition beyond being the armory officer at the castle. Heck, she doesn't even identify herself by rank when addressing the new general. So we can assume she either isn't too invested or was never important enough to warrant a rank in the first place. One of the biggest things that turns Fallout 4 players off to the Minutemen is the simple fact that as the Soul Survivor, I am the Senate. Wait, that's not right. I am the Minutemen. The General is the one clearing and settling locations, fending off attacks, forging alliances, and inducting members. So if you ever leave, there's nobody else to keep the Minutemen from imploding again. So how do you solve this problem? Well, you attract new talent, of course. There are already several recruitable settlers that you can invite to live in your settlements, most of which are intended to become Tier 4 vendors like Ron Staples or Anne Hargrave. But seriously, how hard could it have been to create one gunner with a conscience that we could convince to defect to the Minutemen? One Diamond City security guard? One runaway courser? There's already a quest that has the Minutemen fighting to prevent the Institute from press-ganging a Commonwealth scientist into their service. How difficult would it have been to 
add three or four voice lines to invite Dr. Wallace to join the Minutemen in exchange for protection at the end of that quest. Heck, Paladin Dance was quoted as saying that the Minutemen reminded him of the Brotherhood of Steel under Owen Lyon's leadership, so if you succeeded in saving his life from a 22-year-old megalomaniac, it makes perfect sense that you could convince him to accept a post in the Minutemen. Now, it might take a bit of convincing, but believing that he is providing discipline and direction to the Minutemen could be exactly the sort of thing that could allow Dance to once again find meaning in life after being exiled from the only family he's ever known. Recruiting these talented, experienced officers, scientists, and operatives could be exactly what the Minutemen need to become an organization capable of surviving the inevitable loss of the sole survivor. It's one of the coolest moments in a person's first Minutemen playthrough. You've recruited a few settlements, things are starting to look up, and all of a sudden, you're walking down a crumbling roadway and coming straight towards you is a newly formed Minutemen patrol. Some are wearing cobbled together uniforms, some are just dressed in rags, they have an assortment of laser muskets and whatever pipe pistol was handed down by their grandparents. Sometimes they'll even have an attack dog with them just to even the odds a little bit. It's not glorious by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a start. Then 40 hours of game gameplay and 30 levels later, those same Minutemen are still packing junk and running into hordes of super mutants using heavy lasers and miniguns. The Minutemen desperately need to get their hands on some better gear. All of the other factions do it. Brotherhood initiates and knights at lower levels are replaced by paladins, knight sergeants, and even star paladins at higher levels. Heck, even the gunners get better gear as they progress through the ranks. So why don't the Minutemen ever trade in those janky laser muskets for pre-war laser rifles, pipe weapons for combat rifles, sniper rifles, and combat Combat shotguns. Why don't they ever slap a coat of blue paint on a combat armor chest piece and use it to protect their unsightly innards? I'm not saying they need to start walking around in power armor and packing gauze rifles and gatling lasers, but what is the point of creating all these trade networks if no money is going towards weapons, armor, or a semi-standardized uniform for the Minutemen? While many Fallout 4 players rejoiced when they realized that pursuing the Nuka World storyline would cause Preston to become angry with you and stop giving you Radiant quests, it actually creates a pretty major conflict of interest who want to have their cake and to eat it too. The only way to complete Nuka World with a game state that leaves you on good terms with the Minutemen is to progress to level 30, go to Nuka World, do all the do's that are there to be done, and once you've big baddied all there is to be baddied, you complete open season, create a giant power vacuum, and then go back as the greatest raider slaying monster there is to slay the level 1 wimps besieging Preston and the gang at Concord. That's like french frying when you're supposed to pizza, you're gonna have a real bad time. Instead, it would have made way more sense for Preston to confront you, and instead of taking his ball and going home, convince you, the player, to do the right thing, and to accompany you during the open season quest to make sure that the job is done right. At the end of open season, you could also replace some of the Nuka World Raiders around Nuka Town, USA with Minutemen, essentially providing protection for the newly freed traders living there and to stabilize things after wiping out three highly influential raider gangs. We don't need them to take over all of the different parks in Nuka World or anything like that. That might get a bit tedious and make Nuka World overstay its welcome, and there are already plenty of things in Fallout 4 that do that without us adding to them. Like, it isn't a continuation of point four, it's just a friendly reminder. If you haven't thought to already, a like on the video goes a long way towards helping the channel and helps us gauge the kind of content that provides the most value to you, you beautiful person you. Please, thank you, and now on to number five. So here's the deal. The Minutemen have no leadership, no direction, pretty much nothing that a paramilitary organization needs to be able to project power and keep the peace. As much as we've already pointed out the need for better weapons and armor, more leaders, more strategy and planning, it all means nothing if your men don't have the training and discipline to carry out their orders and fight effectively when the need arises. By sheer stroke of luck, if playing is Nate, the new general of the Minutemen has the benefit of real military experience. Even if he did nothing but patrol country roads in Saskatchewan on foot, he still has the benefit of having received U.S. Army basic training and knows how to shoot straight, how to read maps, how to iron his dress uniform, you know, boot camp stuff. The problem is, all that training is trapped in Nate's head. If only Fallout 4 had this magical device that lets you record and experience memories in a virtual reality simulator. Oh, there is? Perfect. 
The memory den is home to several VR pods that could be used to create a training program from Nate's memories of basic training. The US Army made heavy use of VR training systems, such as in the case of the flight simulators at Nellis Air Force Base and Operation Anchorage in Washington, DC. Nate should be familiar with the tech, so it makes perfect sense that he would want to use a similar method to recreate US Army boot camp for use by the Minutemen. Naturally, this only applies if you went with Nate instead of Nora, but you could always find a way to shoehorn in memories of Nora going to Nate's boot camp graduation ceremony. As she travels through his basic training command, she notices cadets performing various drills and maneuvers. You could fast forward to Nate taking her shooting and teaching her how to clean and maintain her weapon. I get why Bethesda probably shied away from this idea, not that there's any proof they ever considered it in the first place, I'm just spitballing here after all. There would have to be two different versions of the quest, one for Nate and one for Nora, but you know what? That's what creates replayability, Todd. You could even extend this questline to include <laughs> fetch quests. I think I'm gonna be sick. Say for example, Sturgis, the greatest unsung hero in the Minutemen, needs to reverse engineer the memory pods, but Dr. Amari doesn't know how to safely disassemble them without damaging them, so you have to go to the National Guard Training Depot to find schematics and manuals for pods they were slated to receive but never arrived prior to bombs dropping. With these manuals in hand, Sturgis can safely disassemble one of the pods in the memory den and learn how to manufacture new ones from scratch. Hell, he made a teleporter based on doodles scribbled by a super mutant. I think he could handle an Oculus TiVo with the aid of manual schematics and a live example. Then, as per use, you could begin building training pods at Minutemen settlements. Pods could, get this, teach your settlers to defend themselves, either increasing the likelihood or completely guaranteeing that settlements can successfully defend themselves even if you don't drop whatever you're doing to go save them. I know, novel concept. The benefit of actual military training could go a long way toward reorganizing the Minutemen into a fighting force that could feasibly defeat the institute and even the Brotherhood of Steel without the cop-out justification of deus ex machina. There are so many more ways that the Minutemen could have been approved in Fallout 4, but these are just a few of our favorite what-ifs that given just a couple more weeks in development could have drastically improved the Minutemen for the better. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Would any of these sway your decision to side with one of the other factions? Let us know in the comments below. It is our hope that this series will eventually explore each of the four major factions in Fallout 4, possibly even beyond. Anyway, since I'm pretty much out of things to say, I'll simply close by wishing you safety and happiness and hope to see you all here next time on Grey Gaming.